prepositions of place. These are among the most enjoyable things for English students to learn. <laughs> no, of course not. I don't think anybody really enjoys learning how to use prepositions. But if you want to express yourself clearly, then you need to know how to use them correctly. Do we say, for example, on the lake, in the lake, or at the lake? Actually, all of those are correct, but they mean different things. I've already made a video on prepositions of time, you'll find the link in the description, and this video is on prepositions of place. There are lots of prepositions of place, but in this video we're just going to look at the three main ones, the three most common ones. In, at, and on. Just a couple of reminders before we begin. If you'd like to improve your vocabulary, remember to sign up for my free advanced English email lessons. You'll find the link in the description. And if you want to stop making so many mistakes in English, remember that I also have a course on Udemy which looks at common mistakes made by English learners. To receive my special discount for that, you just need to click the link in the description. Okay, now prepositions of place. There are some general rules for these, but unfortunately sometimes you just need to remember fixed phrases. Let's first look at in. Generally speaking, we use in if the thing or the person is surrounded by something else. For example, there is something in this box. There is water in this glass. There is a small animal in his pocket. Most people keep their underwear in a drawer. Most people. We also use it for bigger things. For example, I am in a room. This room is in a house. We can actually use in for all types of homes and buildings. In a building. In an apartment. In a castle. In a warehouse. You can use at for buildings as well, but the meaning changes a bit. We'll look at that later in the video. We also use in for some outdoor places. For example, I saw Frank peeing in the garden. Well, he is a koala. There are lots of shops in the city centre. Even though these places are outside, there's still this idea of being surrounded by something. We use in for geographical locations as well, like towns, regions, states, countries, etc. I used to live in Paris. I now live in New South Wales. New South Wales is a state in Australia. Some people like to holiday in the mountains. They used to live in the city, but now they live in the country. You can say in the countryside, but most of the time we just say in the country. It's also used for north, south, east and west. Tasmania is in the south. I don't want to live there because it's very cold. Newcastle is in the north of England. Apparently it's very cold there as well. Another thing we use it for is to talk about the contents of food and liquids. 
There is a lot of fat in donuts. But I eat them anyway. Are there raw onions in that salad? There isn't much alcohol in light beer. Another general rule for in is that we usually use it for flat printed things. For example, how many people are in that picture? I know it's true because I read it in a book. We also say in a photo, in a newspaper, in a magazine, and in a letter. But be careful. We say on a page and on the internet. I know it's true because I saw it on the internet. And on that note, now it's time to look at on. Generally speaking, we use on for surfaces. I am sitting on a couch. The lamp is on that table. You have a stain on your t-shirt. There is a picture on the wall. George likes to sleep on the floor. We also say on the ground, on the ceiling, on the door, on the roof, etc. Although we say in a building, we use on for the different floors in a building. For example, when I lived in Paris, I lived on the sixth floor with no lift. I had very strong thighs when I lived in Paris. On the topic of places, we say on an island. For example, Frank doesn't really like people and would prefer to live alone on an island. Another example. There aren't many people living on Hamilton Island. However, if the name of the island doesn't have the word island in it, we usually use the preposition in. For example, she always holidays in Bali. We also use on for coasts. He lives on the coast because he loves the beach. Sydney is on the east coast of Australia. And we say on a farm. Ethel does not want to live on a farm. Another thing that you need to remember is that we use on for the nouns right, left, and side. In Australia, we drive on the left. In other words, we drive on the right side of the road. The driver's seat is on the right-hand side. Now, I know I said we usually use in for printed things like pictures and letters, but there are some exceptions. We say on a map, on a menu, on a list, and on a page. If we're talking about a specific page in a book or a newspaper, we say on page the number. For example, the picture is on page 10. When we're talking about paper, well, it depends. If we're talking about something like a newspaper or a research paper, we use in. I know it's true because I read it in the newspaper. If we're talking about a physical piece or sheet of paper, we use on. For example, there are marks on this paper. And now it's time for at. To be honest, there isn't really a general rule for at. Some people say it's used to indicate a point in space, 
Um, that is kind of true, but I don't know how helpful that is. I think it might be more useful if you think of at as quite a general preposition that is usually less specific than in or on. It's often used to indicate a general location, and it's similar to very close to. For example, if this is the thing and this is you, you could say, I am at the thing. <laughs> um, imagine this is a fence. You could say, I am at the fence. You're not on the fence or on the fence. Uh, you're certainly not in the fence. I don't think that's even possible. Um, you are at the fence. Some more examples. Frank waited at the bus stop. There is somebody at the door. Now you can say on the door as well, uh, but it means something else. So for example, this is the door. If there's something attached to the door, then it is on the door. But if somebody has knocked and then they're standing here, they are at the door. There's a cat at the window. She stopped at the traffic lights. There are also a few specific rules for at. We use at for events. Frank got drunk at the party. There were lots of people at the meeting. And we also say at a concert, at a conference, at a wedding, at a seminar, etc. And there are some instances in which we use at immediately before the place. For example, he's at work now. She's studying law at university. And we also say at school and at college. We say at home as well. If you use verbs like to be or to stay, the at is optional. For example, you can say, I was at home all weekend. Or, I was home all weekend. But if you want to say that you're doing something where you live, then you need at. For example, I used to go to the gym, but now I exercise at home. Because I am a cheapskate. Yes, I know it's a little bit confusing. And speaking of confusing, now we're going to look at some tricky points. Remember, tricky means a bit difficult. If something is tricky, normally you need to pay a bit more attention to it. So far I've just shown you the quite simple basic rules for in, at, and on when they're used as prepositions of place. Now we're going to look at the slightly more complicated rules. Let's first look at in and at when we're talking about buildings. As I said earlier, we use in if we are surrounded by something or if we're in an enclosed space. That means that you can use in if you are inside a building. But we often use at for buildings and outdoor places as well. For example, you can say in a restaurant or at a restaurant in a supermarket or at a supermarket, in a park or at a park. Normally at is a bit more general. For example, if you say, I am at the restaurant, you might be 
inside. Or you might be outside and very close to the restaurant. You might be in the car park. However, if you say, I'm in the restaurant, it definitely means that you're inside. We also usually use at if we are talking about where an event takes place. So we'd say, there are 30 tables in the restaurant. But we had dinner at the restaurant. That rule also applies if we're talking about somebody's home. For example, there are lots of cockroaches in John's house. I do not want to stay at John's house. There are some instances when we use in immediately before the location. For example, in hospital. Did you know that Kate was in hospital? And in prison or in jail. Frank spent a night in jail. But if you say in hospital, it means that the person is a patient. If you say in the hospital or at the hospital, the person might be a patient, but they could also be a visitor or someone who works there. Similarly, if you say in prison or in jail, it means that the person is being held there. They're a prisoner, in other words. If Frank worked there, I could say, Frank works at a jail. Now let's look at streets. These rules also apply to words like road and avenue. Usually we use on here. There are lots of pubs on George Street. Some people also use in for streets. There are lots of pubs in George Street. However, if there is a number before the street name, we use at. There is a good pub at 110 George Street. And now some rules for water and places with water. If the thing or the person or the animal is surrounded by water, we use in. For example, I saw Frank swimming in our neighbor's pool. There are lots of fish in this river. There's a small island in the lake. However, if the person or the thing is on the surface of the water, we usually use on. There are lots of boats on the lake. But some people also say in there. There are lots of boats in the lake. If the thing or the person is not in the water, but is close to the water, we usually use at. I'm going to have a picnic at the lake. You can also use at to be more general. For example, if someone asked me, do you know where George is? I could say, yes, he's at the local pool. I don't know if right now, as we speak, he is in the swimming pool. He might be lying next to the swimming pool, but I know that he went to the swimming pool. And now transport. Generally speaking, we use on for forms of transport. I'm on the plane. She met her husband on a bus. Frank got arrested on the train. You can use in here, in the plane, in the bus, in the train, 
but we normally only use that if we really want to emphasize that the thing or the person is inside and not outside. We also say on a ship and on a boat. However, if it's a small boat, especially if it's something like a canoe or a rowboat, we usually use in. For example, when I was on the lake in my boat, a bird pooped on my head. We also use on for bicycles, motorbikes, and horses. The main exception for forms of transport is cars and things that are similar to cars. So we say in a car, in a taxi, in a van, and in a truck. On the topic of transport, we say at the airport and at the station. So at the bus station or the train station. The final tricky point we're going to look at today is with the word corner. Look at these pictures. The ball is in the corner. Again, there is this idea of being surrounded by something. But we say, there is a pub on the corner. You can also say at the corner. There is a pub at the corner. Okay guys, that is it for today. There are a few other tricky points regarding in, at, and on, but I think this video is long enough and I do believe I've covered the most important points. Remember, if you want to watch my video on prepositions of time, you'll find the link in the description. If you like this video, please remember to hit the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss any new videos. And I'll see you next time. Bye, guys. But, however, but we use the sixth floor, the sixth floor, the sixth floor, and on that. <coughs> okay. <laughs> if you'd like to improve remember it's windy outside and ugh. oh